Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India to all. So, in this lecture uh, we will be uh, discussing about one process of thermochemical treatment which is called carburizing. It means where we are trying to introduce carbon into the surface regions of the workpiece. So, uh, we discussed in the last lecture the three possible ways we can harden the uh, surface region material of a component. One is by the precipitation hardening, other one is by the solid solution strengthening and by changing the face of the uh, existing material surface. That means like it is like a, a initially a tempered martensite which is a you know the martensite with a precipitated carbides. Now, we will change that with a purely martensite. Okay. So, how uh, uh, we, we know that actually in the iron carbon system the martensite is the hardest phase. So, that is why we would like to have the martensite at the surface of the components which provides a good wear and you know the uh, uh, good wear resistance. Okay. So, how we can uh, do this process is that, so we take a, uh, let us look at first the iron carbon phase diagram. So, here uh, what you see is the different phase fields of the iron carbon phase diagram where you have the uh, high temperature austenite field right this is all the austenite field and then you have a eutectoid reaction that is called a, a1 temperature at 738 degrees celsius and this is as a function of mass percent of carbon and this is the temperature axis so for a given temperature and the amount of mass fraction of carbon we can actually know what phases are expected to be at the equilibrium condition right so that means we heat uh, very slowly and cool very slowly so now if you look at the uh, temperature below 738 this region and it shows that if you look at this portion here it shows only very small solubility for the uh, ferritic iron it means it has a very small solubility that means the moment you add a, a carbon beyond a very small limit then you form actually the uh, two phase mixture of ferrite plus cementite. Whereas, the, if you go to this uh, condition of the austenite right which can take up lot of carbon into it. So, it is like at 1154 degree Celsius you see that it can take up about 2.08 weight percent of carbon maximum amount it can be taken up in the solid solution. Right. That means, it will be a, a FCC iron uh, lattice having uh, carbon atoms in the interstitial uh, sites. So, now uh, if we have a for example, a low carbon steel, so you have the low carbon steel component having certain microstructure okay it will be largely ferrite plus a small amount of perlite okay so now if we want to do the carburizing then objective is to have if suppose this is the surface region we want to have this to be martensite Whereas, the bulk this is the core will be just like a ferrite plus cementite or you can say that a ferrite plus perlite. Yeah. So, this is the kind of situation we want to have after the carburization treatment. So, how can we uh, achieve that? 
Now the issue is let us say that because we know that a uh, lot of carbon can dissolve in the austenitic phase. So, if I say that this is the temperature axis and then what I do is that and this is where actually the uh, A 3 temperature this is the temperature above which everything will be austenite ok. This is the A 3 temperature here it will be gamma ok phase uh, single phase gamma and then we take this sample to this region ok and then we introduce the carbon into the surface region ok. So, then what happens actually if you look at actually the way the uh, if you go from the surface into the percentage of carbon as a function of distance below surface. So, we generate something like this yeah. So, but if you see the microstructure entire sample that means, if this is the surface region having the carbon enriched region ok. This is the region having a, uh, a high amount of carbon and both are austenite right at this condition this is also gamma this is also gamma ok gamma is for the austenite. But the difference is the amount of carbon is different at the surface region gamma that means, it has got a higher carbon than the ca carbon than the gamma which is below the surface uh, subsurface. Yeah. So, now actually when you take such a composite sample okay, and cool rapidly okay, then you get actually the at low temperature that means, after quenching ok this means actually you do let us say the water quenching. So, then you get actually the surface region having a martensite with the underlying layer being the the like a ferrite plus perlite. Now, you see that we know that when you heat up the uh, sample to austenitic region entire sample will be of austenite right, right from the surface to the center of the uh, sample. But when you cool it down by rapidly only the surface region which is enriched with uh, carbon is able to get the martensite ok. Why is it so? I think you all are aware of hardenability of the steel ok. We have a definition for hardness which is a material property and hardenability it is the ability of the material to able to form martensite when it is cooled ok. So, how easily like we, 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 we know that in order to form martensite we need to do a non equilibrium cooling that means, it should cool the astronite to room temperature at very rapid rate. Now, how rapid that means that is more rapid we need to cool means that is more difficult that means, it has a low hardenability for that steel as compared to when you can cool slowly and get the hardness that is a uh, high hardenability. So, for the in order to understand this ok. So, we need to understand the so called TTT diagram or the uh, CCT diagram. For example, you know the TTT diagram. What this 3 T stands for? Time, temperature, transformation. Yeah. So, what is uh, this diagrams provide is you have a temperature as a function of time and then you can mark the temperature for example, this can be a 3 temperature right and then you have a time scale actually then you will see that the uh, phase fields when you get the different phases of the for example, such a C curves can be uh, uh, seen this is the gamma this is also gamma right 
and this is a metastable gamma because you see that below A 3 it should have been not actually the gamma single phase gamma. So, that means it is a metastable above it is a stable gamma field and these diagrams tell us that uh, how you can construct such a diagram you take a uh, steel sample take it to the uh, austenitic region that means above A 3 and rapidly cool it down to let us say temperature T 1 okay. and you hold it at this temperature and then you start to see when it starts to form the for example, the Uh, for, uh, suppose if it is a eutectic uh, sorry eutectoid steel then it when it will start to form the perlite right that time is will be given by this that is a perlite start and then if I keep it then here the amount of perlite will be keep increasing and then it will be fully perlite this is the perlite complete right. So, this is where actually you have a perlite plus gamma and then here you end up with fully perlitic steel. So, that is the connection of all these points and you can do this at different temperatures you get that. So, now actually the some line will be there that is called as a martensite start temperature line okay. that means if you can reach these points okay, then we can produce the martensite. Now, for example, in the carburizing we have a sample okay, at the surface region you have if I plot here the carbon content then up to here this will be more okay, and then it will be like that in the this one. So, this is also gamma enriched with carbon this is a gamma which is having the carbon as in the initial steel chemistry. Now, these if we want to produce the martensite for example, in this particular steel. So, then we need to for example, from this state we need to cool it at least uh, it should be the okay. this should be the minimum cooling rate this you see that this is actually the dt by dt okay. that is the cooling rate dt by dt the slope of this line. This is the minimum cooling rate at which you can get the martensite. If you are going higher than this okay, uh, sorry smaller than this then you will enter into this region where you produce actually the perlitic microstructure that means you will not get the martensite. So, however, these diagrams okay, would known to have a dependence on the you know the steel chemistry. Okay. How we can do that suppose for example, I have a another steel having a more carbon than what has been shown here that will have is uh, okay, this is for steel with more carbon. Okay. Now, because it is being shifted towards the you know the uh, left. So, now the critical cooling rate or the minimum cooling rate to produce the martensite is this one. Okay. This is for d t by d t for low carbon and this provides the d t by d t for the high carbon. Okay. That means, when you are cooling it the uh, with this rate suppose you are cooling it and now this can be seen as like you have this surface region being the this part and this the, these curves are for the core of the sample. Okay. You have a low carbon for which these are the transformation curves okay, that is for this one this region being high carbon that has the transformation curve given by these lines. Now, when this sample okay, this sample is being cooled rapidly and now the cooling rate is suppose this one okay, suppose you are following a cooling rate of this is the cooling rate you are following then for this cooling rate okay, what you get is this can become martensite because you are cooling. Okay. So, I think 
I have just said opposite ok, it is the reverse ok. This is actually for low carbon and this is for high carbon ok, I said it other way around. So, now actually this is uh, ok, so I will just change these things. So, now this is for the high carbon ok, this curves are for the high carbon and these curves are for the low carbon. So, I, I just said it other way around. So, I hope it is clear to you that when you have more amount of carbon the these curves will shift away from the temperature axis that means shift towards right offering actually that. Now, when you cool this, this region and this region let us say that have been cooled at the same rate and for example, that rate is given by one in between. So, but this region is unable to you know the uh, because it has got its CCT curve here. So, now when I cool with this rate for example, in between then this region is unable to produce martensite, but this region is able to produce the martensite. So, in a way by carburizing what we are doing is we are enhancing the hardenability of surface region. So, because of this after adding the carbon because it has improved the hardenability. So, by cooling it you are able to produce the martensite at the surface. This is what actually happens in a low carbon steel where you have a core which is softer and by adding this uh, into the uh, steel we are able to enhance the surface hardness by producing martensite. Now, on this right here what is shown here in this plot is how the hardness of the martensite changes with the amount of carbon it is a x axis is weight percent of carbon and how the hardness is changing ok. Here it is a Rockwell C skull it is a, di a diamond pyramid uh, hardness number ok like this uh, uh, another means to look at the hardness. You see that initially uh, it has got a very small increase in the hardness, but if you want to have a significant rise in the hardness you need to have the martensite with more carbon right. For example, our aim is to get about 60 RC for the surface then we should have at least about 0.4 weight percent carbon right. So, that is where we need to have a martensite which is also having a decent amount of carbon inside our objective is not to get any martensite a low carbon martensite will not have enough hardness what is uh, we are looking for. So, that is where we want to actually realize a high carbon content to the surface this provides two things one is that it improves the hardenability and at the same time when it forms the martensite that will also have a higher hardness. So, these are the things one can uh, realize from the carburizing. So, in this case actually we see that uh, one issue ok, when we do the carburizing now the entire component has to be heated up to the austenitic region ok. That means, it will be entire sample will be like this entire sample when we do carburizing is uh, taken to the temperature where it is gamma that is FCC ok. And now when we cool it down after carburizing yeah, when we are cooling it after carburizing we are making the sample to be surface be martensite and the subsurface be ferrite plus perlite ok. So, Martin side ok. So, I hope you are able to read that. So, due to this because FCC being a much close packed structure as compared to BCC ferrite or the body centered tetragonal Martin site. So, you see that there will be a volume increase when we cool the uh, sample after the carburization. You imagine that you have a big component ok let us say a very big gear and we do the carburizing by heating up this entire big gear 
to the austenitizing temperature and we know that we need to cool it rapidly in order to produce the martensite at the surface. And when we do that, entire sample tries to change its phase and there will be a large distortions that means it wants to actually change and that can lead to a dimensional intolerance. You have made the ge gear has been manufactured with certain dimensions right. Now due to the heat treatment okay, which we are doing like by carburizing and then quenching, we will introduce actually the dimensional changes. So, that requires again a machining and even a component can fail because of you know the stresses being generated from this transformation. So, that is the one disadvantage of carburizing and another problem is that for example, you have a bulk microstructure that has been optimized by doing you know certain heat treatment and mechanical deformation. But now in the process of carburizing you are killing all of it you know it is like by heating the things to austenitic region means it is a reset button type ok. Whatever has been uh, optimized it all will go everything will come to the austenite now. Now again it requires that we need to optimize again the bulk property. So, that is also an another you know the disadvantage of carburizing ok. But it allows you to do very quickly because carbon sources are very cheap ok that means uh, and then uh, so, there are you know the uh, limitations for every process yeah. So, keeping in mind these limitations now if we move to nitriding ok. So, whether this can be eliminated yeah. So, the nitriding uh, employs the hardening for the surface regions by the precipitation hardening mechanism ok. So, what is shown here is the metastable iron nitrogen phase diagram you see that metastable because here we all these iron nitrides actually are thermodynamically unstable. The same holds for you know the iron carbon phase diagram which is also metastable whenever we introduce cementite in that uh, phase diagram. So, now here we you see that this is only a portion of the iron nitrogen phase diagram because you see that we have not gone to the 100 percent nitrogen axis. So, again you see here you have a ferritic phase that is only in this small region right this is the border for the uh, ferritic iron it has got a very low solubility you know that at the ectoid temperature of 592 degree Celsius it can only take up 0.4 atomic percent yeah you see that this is given in atomic percent in 8 percent it will be somewhere around 0.1 right. So, and the moment you cross this nitrogen solubility limit you start to produce this gamma prime iron nitride ok. So, that is what is expected to happen when you take a pure iron ok because this is a iron nitrogen phase diagram. So, now actually we know that carbon you know the like in iron carbon phase diagram here also gamma iron has a large solubility for nitrogen right. So, like 10.3 atomic percent at the 650 degree Celsius. However, we do not want to go to this temperature the reason being this is what we are doing it with carburizing where we am able to produce a you know carbon enriched ray layer that can produce martensite same thing can be done with nitrogen. You can produce a iron nitrogen austenite ok which is enriched with iron nitrogen when you cool it rapidly you produce a iron nitrogen martensite ok. That is not the whole purpose because that can be already done by the carburizing. So, how does this uh, nitriding work? So, we do not want to have uh, because we do not want to have any phase transformation of the bulk of the material. That means, if I can do the treatment like below this temperature 592 degree Celsius the phase of the matrix will be simply the uh, whatever is been fixed before because there will be no transformations because the for iron carbon system. So, it was the temperature. So, 738 degree Celsius is the eutectoid temperature right whereas, for the iron nitrogen system this eutectoid temperature is 592 degree Celsius right because of this this is being uh, you know the higher than the eutectoid temperature of nitriding if I do the nitriding 
a temperature less than 592 degree Celsius. So, the bulk of the steel ok, bulk microstructure of the steel for example, is a you know the the bulk microstructure of the steel will not change because in order to change that we need to go to this temperature ok. Yeah? So, now I want to only harden the surface region ok without changing the anything of the bulk that is the case if I do the treatment at this low temperature right. So, you have a component which has already uh, fixed its internal microstructure bulk microstructure and now I do not want to change anything of the bulk property that means I should not heat it up to too high temperatures where transformations can happen. Now, because uh, it is a low temperature nothing will happen there, but now how the hardening will happen right. You see that again the solubility of nitrogen in the uh, you know the ferritic iron is very low like the iron carbon, but one the one good thing about nitrogen is there are elements having huge chemical affinity to nitrogen. For example, aluminum, titanium, okay, vanadium, okay. There are you know the elements which have strong affinity to nitrogen to form for example, aluminum nitride or titanium nitride or vanadium nitride. Okay. So, this is the uh, you know the uh, uh, provision which makes nitriding possible. Okay. So, that means, if I have a steel okay, which has got some of these elements being alloyed inside. Okay. When I am introducing nitrogen, okay, when this nitrogen diffuses in okay, a small amount that is within this limit, you can start to form these nitride precipitates. Okay. These form actually as a very nano sized precipitates of these nitrides. Okay. All these darts you can think of these nitrides will develop and that is where it leads to the precipitation hardening of this region. Okay. That means, it will remain as a ferritic in the ferrite matrix you are able to produce these nano sized nitrides and that will lead to the enhancement in the property. So, in this case after the nitriding you do not need to quench the sample because we are not going to produce martensite it is only ferrite. So, that means, you can cool slowly. So, there will be less or no dimensional changes after the car nitriding treatment. You see this way you see that the disadvantages of nitriding what we have seen can be you know the overcome if you employ the nitriding treatment. So, this way we can actually optimize the, uh, the process to give the surface hardness without changing the dimensions or the internal property of the core of the material. Okay. So, this is where we are having a precipitation hardening. So, we have discussed about also that another way to uh, change the surface properties is to convert the surface region into a different compound of iron. For example, if you have a steel sample okay, and you make the surface region of the steel sample being converted into a compound or you know the of which are having a very hard and wear resistance. So, that is where the this boriding treatment works. Okay. Boriding means we are trying to introduce boron into the surface regions of the material that will change the microstructure such that it will produce layers of iron borides at the surface. Okay. So, it forms so called F E B and F E 2 B layers okay. and these layers are extremely hard and have a very good thermal stability. Thermal stability means when we heat up even up to 1000 degree Celsius these layers will remain intact. Okay. 
that means you can even do the heat treatment to fix the internal microstructure. Yeah, let us say that you produce this iron boride layers and then you can still do the heat treatment of the bulk that means because you are able to go to the higher temperature. So, this is the uh, disadvantage for example, in case of uh, nitriding for example, you do the nitriding and then somehow you want to let us say the change the microstructure of the uh, entire bulk of the sample. That means, you need to heat up and then to the austenitic region and then cool it down and then where you lose all the uh, nitrided region because all the nitrogen will try to diffuse into the bulk of the sample. So, that is the becomes a uh, disadvantage of the uh, nitriding treatment, but in this case because these boride layers are extremely uh, you know the hard and they are you know the uh, have a very good thermal stability. So, by having these layers produced you can still do the heat treatments to the sample. So, this is a another dedicated uh, treatments uh, people employ to produce a highly wear resistant uh, and these are also known to have a good corrosion resistance layers of borides on the steel surfaces. In this case also because boron has a very negligible solubility in the iron. So, that is where actually it will not lead to much hardening by diffusion or dissolution in the matrix, but it will only produce these layers which are extremely hard. So, one may think that for example, in nitriding one can also produce layers of iron nitrides. Okay. So, there are two iron nitrides it is called as a epsilon F e 3 n and gamma prime F e 2 n. Okay. We will go into those details of these structure and the properties of these nitrides when we detailedly look into that. But the difference from the boriding right if you look at the boriding and you have nitriding in both cases you are able to produce some compounds of iron here it is iron nitrides and here it is iron borides. The difference is that these iron borides are quite stable as compared to these iron nitrides are metastable. So, if I heat up this you know the iron nitrides they simply decompose okay. they lead to decompose into iron plus N 2 gas. Okay. So, you end up with simply a porous material okay, with nitrogen gas filled pores. So, that is where uh, uh, once you produce these iron nitrides they are also hard, but they have a very less thermal stability because they are thermodynamically unstable. So, you will not be able to have them as a uh, very porous free layers, whereas these iron borides are extremely stable. Okay. So, that is where actually this kind of compound layers can be uh, produced with boriding and with a good properties as compared to the iron nitrides. So, in the case of nitriding that is why mostly people wants only the no compounds, but it is a alpha iron matrix with precipitates of alloying element nitrides right these are the nitrides of like aluminum nitride or chromium nitride or you know the titanium nitride okay this is the kind of hardening people wants okay now uh, this is all you know the uh, about a sort of a quick overview of these three categories of thermochemical treatments carburizing where we are actually producing uh, a martensitic layer on the surface of the steel by introducing carbon into the austenite and followed by its quenching. This leads to carbon does two purposes one is it will increase the amount of carbon that leads to whatever the martensite is forming will have a higher hardness and same time it is also improving the hardenability, but with the cooling rate whatever you employ it is easy to form martensite at the surface than into the in the core of the your sample. The other uh, process which we have discussed is that because the carburizing has a disadvantages that when you cool it down after the carburizing treatment it involves the phase transformation of the entire sample that means the bulk as well as the surface region right that involves a transformation from a close packed FCC gamma phase into a 
much openly uh, structured uh, BCC or BCT phase. So, this leads to a large volume misfits and uh, you know the dimensional intolerance and localized stresses creation because we are rapidly cooling that can lead to the failure of a big sized components. Now, to overcome that we need a treatment which can be done at a low temperature that means, where we will not change any phase of the iron carbon phases like if I have some ferrite it will remain as ferrite it will not change to for example, austenite. So, that is the case with the nitriding you can do that nitriding at a below uh, 580 or 592 degree Celsius and where if your steel contains uh, elements which have a strong chemical affinity to nitrogen such as aluminum or titanium. And then when you have these elements added into the steel they will react with the nitrogen which is diffusing into the ferrite and form the nano sized nitride precipitates that leads to precipitation hardening. So, whereas often you want to have a surface uh, treatment which allows you to also to do the further high temperature heat treatments of the steel that means, whatever the uh, phase you produced at the surface should be stable to go to higher temperatures ok. That is the case with you know the iron borides which you can be produced by treatment called boriding ok, where we are introducing the boron into the surface regions which, pro which produces iron borides and that improves the uh, that provides a very good wear resistance and they have a very good thermal stability. So, it can be used even at you know the uh, uh, components operating at a higher temperatures or it allows you to do the heat treatments. So, with this now uh, I want to uh, uh, conclude this lecture and in the coming lectures we go into the details of the these three processes ok. So, like what are the thermodynamics of the source of carbon, what kind of you know the atmospheres which are source of carbon can be used or atmospheres which are source of nitrogen or the atmospheres which are source of boron and how to deal with this uh, thermodynamic state of those systems. And then the kinetic part that how fast the process runs, how that you know the reaction works atmosphere to the surface of the sample and then they should diffuse inwardly and how to deal with those kinetics of the processes ok. Uh, once we cover those things then you would be able to appreciate that what are the controlling parameters which needs to be uh, kept in mind while engineering the properties ok.